I'm counting on you to breathe the breath of life back inside of me. Thou will revive me, he says. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies. Somebody ought to tell God thank you this morning for that. Somebody ought to just give him some glory for that. For him saying, look, he's going to stretch forth his hand against the wrath of the enemies. He's not going to allow me to stay in this current condition. He's not going to allow me to stay in this place of defeat. He's not going to allow me to stay in this that I am dealing with right now. God, I want to thank you that my enemies do not triumph over me. That's what I want to thank you for. He says, and thy right hand shall save me. Right hand fellowship, right hand of power, he said, is going to save me. And then he goes on in verse 8 to say, the Lord will perfect that way which concerneth me. Somebody ought to get happy this morning. Somebody ought to tell God I love you this morning. Somebody ought to say, hey man, I want to thank you for who you are with me. I want to thank you. It says he will perfect that that concerns me. Lord, have mercy. Regardless of the position that I may find myself in, the Lord is going to perfect that that concerns me. I showed you in Jeremiah 18, how it says that the clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again. That meant that it was not perfected. That meant that there was some lumps and some clumps. There was some issues. There was some schisms and some isms. There was some some disobedience. or Whatever the case may be, there was some flaws, but it said he made it again. Now Psalms 1-8, one thirty-eight is saying the Lord will perfect that that concerneth me. He's going to make this thing work out. Perfection in the realm of maturity. God is going to use the mistakes if I'm willing to move beyond them. If I'm willing to go on, the Lord is going to perfect those things. He's going to work that stuff out if I am willing to press towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. If I am willing to go beyond the circumstance and the situation, if I am willing to say, God, look, this is where I am. This is who I am. If I am willing, God, I know you see it because you are the one. It's not the it's not the the thing that you want it to be yet. I've not become that yet. I'm on the wheel, God, and I know you see all the blemishes. I know you see all the imperfections. Every bit of them. Don't be the type that's on the wheel that's trying to manipulate the potter. Don't be the type that's on the wheel that's trying to make the potter think that. There's not a blemish there. When there is a blemish, he knows exactly what he wants it to look like. He knows exactly what is supposed to happen. He knows exactly because he has declared the ending from the beginning. He knows, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us. He knows he has a plan set for our life, and it is. It says it is a plan of good and not evil. It is a plan to bring us to a place of peace and to an expected end, which is at an end of victory, is what the Lord has set for us. So he knows exactly what it's supposed to look like. Don't be the type that wants to hide the blemish. Don't be the type that doesn't want it to be seen because what I'm trying to tell you is, is the Lord saw that it was marred in his hand. The thing that you've got to rest on is the fact that it didn't leave his hand. That's the thing somebody ought to hear me this morning. God, you trying to help somebody? I hope they hear you this morning. The thing that stands out is that it did not leave his hand. That's what you got, Lord. Help me, please. Don't be crazy enough to remove yourself out of his hand. Don't jump off the wheel and just say, well, you know what? It's done. It's over with. I'm just through with this. I'm just going to be loose. I'm just going to be out here. Oh, well, what you mean? What are you doing? What you, what, what you mean? He knew that 
it was marred. It was marred in his hand, but he had it on the wheel. Uh, Lord, have mercy. It was marred because of the flesh. It was marred because of humanity. It was marred because of the nature that was already on the inside of it. He had to deal with the nature. He had to deal with the context of, of what was on the inside of it. But if you will notice, uh, he did not stop working the wheel. I wish somebody heard me. He did not stop working the wheel just because uh, it was marred. God already knew what time it was. Lord have mercy. Sometimes God wants you to see what time it is with you. He wants you to see exactly what's operating in you. He wants you to see that you ain't where you thought you were. He wants you to see that, hey baby, the work is not complete. He wants you to see that it's not done yet. It's marred in his hand. But the thing that I love and I'll always love to believe my body is the fact that he did not take his hand off of it just because it was marred. He kept working a work as long as you don't don't allow God to stop working a work. I done told you what it says now in Psalms 138. It says the Lord will perfect mature that which concerneth me. Lord have mercy. If you don't jump off the wheel, the Lord will cause the thing to get better. You will see after a while in life that the thing you thought was going to take you out, you will see in life that the stuff you thought was going to end you, the stuff that you thought was going to make you be done, the stuff that you thought that I don't think I can bounce back from this, uh, the stuff you will see if you stay on that wheel and let the potter keep working the work, you will literally see uh, that he will perfect that that concerns you. You will literally see uh, that God knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, you go feel the heat because it takes heat uh, in order for you to make a vessel. It takes heat, so yeah, you go feel the heat. No, you ain't going to escape the pressure. None of us can escape the pressure of being made. None of us can escape the pressure of being developed. So yeah, you go feel it. But one thing is for sure, the potter will not take his hand. Lord, have mercy. He going to keep spinning and spinning and spinning and keep shaping and keep coming away and keep adding to until he perfect that thing which concerneth me. He's going to keep doing it. He's going to keep doing it until he perfects that which concerneth me. He, Delphine, you're going to stay right where you're at, sweetheart, until I can get what it is that I want to get. The thing of it is, is I'm not the issue. The issue is, are you going to stay on the wheel? That's the issue. The issue is, are you going to stay on the wheel or are you going to jump off? That's the issue. Father, I love you this morning. Are you going to stay on the wheel? He knows is marred. He sure do. He see all them issues. He see all them blemishes. He know it's marred. The greatest blessing is, is when you look at the text, the context of the scripture. That's why I tell y'all all the time, you better stop reading the word of God fast. You better allow it to speak to your spirit and see what the Lord is saying. The Lord stepped to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was not yet changed. The Lord stepped to Jeremiah in the condition that he was in some Somebody need to understand and know that God does not step to you in your perfection. God steps to you in your imperfection because you need him in order to become perfected, which means matured. So you need him in order to become developed. So if you thinking that you got to have it all together before the Lord will show up to you, then you are already messed up. You already in a twisted or perverted mentality. If you're thinking of the sort, the Lord step to Jeremiah in the place, in the condition of where he was and had to literally deal with this man through all of the obstacles that he was going through. Jeremiah at one time did not even think that he could do the call of the Lord. He did not. He became known as the weeping prophet because he cried. He did not even think that he had the ability because the call of God can sometimes seem to you so much bigger than you. It happens with me all 
all the time. It can sometimes seem to you so much bigger than you that you will question sometime to say, really, man, can I really do this? Are you really sure that I am the one that you've chosen to do this? That's when you've got to get out of your own ability and get into the fact of that this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. It is the Lord's opportunity in order to express himself in the earth. I'm just the vessel that he wants to use. He ain't got to carry none of this stuff on me because the government shall be upon his shoulder and to his kingdom there shall be no end. I'm just a vessel that he's using. I'm just a lump of clay that he is shaping and he is making into his image. So it's not my responsibility to do it. And so Jeremiah was this type person that thought and there is no way that I'm going to be able to do this. There will be some things that you would think that there is no way that I'm going to be able to do this. You must not know about me. That's the kind of stuff that'll be going through your head. You must not know about me. You must not know the type of person I am. You must not know what I did. I know what you did last summer. You must not know what I've done. You must not know the type of capabilities that are on the inside of me. No, people may not know, but you can rest assured God knows. And God will deal with you in the private times in order for him to perfect those things. God will visit in the private times to say, hey, that right there, that needs to change right there. Come in for a minute. Jump on this wheel and let's deal with that right there because that right there is going to cost you very dearly. God knows exactly what's going on. And when there was a, when you jump on the wheel, you got to understand that you be marred in the hand of the potter. It's not perfected all at once. It's marred. Yeah, it's marred. It's not not all perfected right then. It's got some lumps and some clumps that's got to be worked out. It's got some stuff that's got to be added to it as well as it's some stuff that's got to be taken away. The greatest thing that we have to do is make sure that we don't jump off that wheel. Don't get your butt off that wheel. Make sure that you stay right there on that wheel. Don't get off that wheel. It's spinning real fast. Merry go round. The wheel is spinning real fast. The potter has his foot on that pedal and it's spinning real fast and his hand is shaping it in what he wants it to be. Don't try to jump off that wheel. Why? Because if you jump off the wheel while it's spinning, you're going to cause so much damage to yourself and you're liable to break with what that, that has been already made. It will break and then it has to be done all over again. I wish y'all would hear the Holy Spirit this morning. I wish you would hear what God is saying. Make sure that you stay in position in order for Christ to do what Psalms 138 says, in order for him to perform fact that which concerns don't you move, don't you get off, just stay right there, he's going to perfect that that concerneth me, that concerneth I love it, I love the fact it says concerneth me he's going to perfect that that concerneth me so he go deal with me by my business. He go deal with me by nobody else. He go deal with me by my stuff. He go deal with me about my stuff. He go work with me about my stuff. I can be an intercessor for other people concerning their stuff, but he's going to deal with me. When I get on the wheel, it's about me. It's about me. It's about the issues that I have. It's about the things that I have to deal with. He's going to perfect that that concerning me. That concerned me. So he's not going to allow me to attempt to try to fix others that I have not fixed me. I ain't. I done got off the wheel. So how is it that I could do anything to fix somebody else? So we got to be careful. We got to be careful. My encouragement to you today is, hey, listen. <laughs> you, it's either going to be one or the two. That's going on with you. Either it's going to be the position of the Lord coming to you with conversation and inviting you to the wheel, or it's going to be that you're on the wheel. For those of you that the Lord is inviting to the wheel, I'd like to encourage you, take the step. Go down to the potter's house. Go on down. Go on down to the potter's house. Come off your high horse. And take your butt on down to the potter's house. He's going to allow you to see 
the type of things that happens. That means he's going to assign someone to your life. He's going to give you a mentor. That's all that means. He's going to put someone in your life and allow you to see what goes on behind the scenes so that you know that it is safe in what's happening at the potter's house. So that you know that it's okay what's happening at the potter's house. So he's going to assign a mentor to your life, someone that you can see what is going on. That's that's the real part of a mentor. You're able to have insight. You're able to see in so that you know exactly how things work. 